Good evening. You know what? I know that I haven't been pushing the dice because they changed their name. Metallic Dice Games is no longer Metallic Dice Games. It's now Fan Roll. Uh, you can still get 10% off by using the code SMSDICE10. <clears throat> go there. 10% off of any of your orders with the code SMSDICE10. But go to fanroll.com. No longer metallicdice.com. So we're still doing it. We're still we're still doing our sponsor there. Um, great bunch of stuff they're putting out. Boom. I like these. Really nice dice. Really nice dice. Except for, yet again, I've Love that. So, remember, it's now no longer Metallic Dice Games. It is now Fan Roll. So, SMS DICE 10. Get 10% off your purchase. And now, get ready for the show. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, Platoon, I'm your captain, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the best in cartoons from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, even into the 2000s. Not necessarily all Saturday morning, but cartoons. As always, Saturday morning cereals is brought to you by Are You Game, the best comic book collectible video game. Role-playing game, Toy Store, located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And you can find us on Facebook as R-A-R-E, the letter U, game, G-A-M-E. Find us on Facebook. You find Group Therapy TV and Instagram and Twitter. You find me, Captain Cartoon, on Twitter. <clears throat> so we are just a few people away from 6,000 subscribers. So thank you guys a lot. Uh, just a heads up, uh, Saturday morning serials will continue. Uh, Sci Fridays will be on hiatus uh, while we're doing getting the new episodes of the Witch Doctor and the Witch ready to go. So there's that to look forward to. We have had a Christmas episode, not necessarily Christmas movies, but we'll, we'll do something. So as always, here we go. So I, I, I had no rhyme or reason to this episode. Uh, I kind of started out with, 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 with something, and then that kind of went away. Because evidently that's what I do. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Saturday Morning Serial is bringing you Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, you know... Sabrina was one of the ones I got back into because of my wife. Not gonna lie. Wife likes Sabrina. I started going back trying to find old cartoons I used to watch when I was a kid. And I enjoy it still as an adult. So, here you guys go. This is Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And this is Will the Real Weatherby Stand Up and Caveman. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hi, I 
I'd love to chat, but I must hurry. I'm a little late for school. Ta-ta! Now to get to my cooking class. Oops! Miss Grundy! Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Grundy, but I... Um, huh? Really, Mr. Weatherby, I am not a caterpillar. I do not have a hundred arms and legs. Now, what do you say to that? Uh, the world of science will be greatly disappointed, Miss Grundy. I'm speaking with reference to having to teach two classes besides my own, including emptying waste baskets. Oh, yes, yes, I, I forgot. We have two teachers and one janitor out ill today, don't we? You have, not I. No, dear. Some days being a principal is just too much. It is. Yes. Just reminding you that you have a speech to give at the PTA this afternoon, Mr. Weatherby. Oh, yes. Thank you, Miss Brown. Oh, no, I just can't stand it. Poor Mr. Weatherby. I wish I could help. Rule 54321 in the Witch's Handbook. No doing good deeds. <laughs> Don't forget, Sabrina. If only I were four people. Four people? Say, that would be easy to do. Oh, please excuse me just this once, Aunt Hilda. Mr. Weatherbees, to your stations. Huh? Uh, uh, strange. Uh, a second ago, I felt like I had a hundred problems, but now I can't recall a single one. I feel like I haven't got a worry in the world. Well, that was quickly solved. Today, our cooking assignment would be to make some chocolate icing. Oh, goody. I love chocolate icing. Me too. Uh, Mr. Weatherby, are you doing the janitorial work? Uh, that's correct, Miss Grundy. Have no fear, the Weatherby boys are here. Hi-ho, ho highs with the trash-collecting guys. Oh, no. They weren't supposed to stay together. Aunt Hilda must have arranged this. <laughs> Oh, hi, oh, hi, and now we say goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. goodbye. Oh, uh, the number to call in West New Jersey is 555-2368. Oh. Miss Grundy has faded. I've got to find these Weatherby boys before they bump into Mr. Weatherby. Quick, some water. Here. Oops. I hope chocolate icing works as well. Hmm. Needs a bit more sugar. Hey, have you heard? Mr. Weatherby is triplets. Huh? Well, I'll be. Uh, hmm? I'm, I'm what? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Weatherby, but this is an emergency. Hmm? The door must have blown shut and locked. Now where did they go? Um, <laughs> attention, class. Uh-oh. Since your teacher is absent and an assignment is due, tis only fitting and proper that we give one to you. We, the Weatherby Boys, without further delay, shall create a moon rocket as classwork for today. Moon rocket? The Weatherby Boys? Why, they are identical! They look alike, too. Oh, dear. I've got to get them out of there and have Aunt Hilda separate them. <laughs> I warned you, Sabrina. Rule 54321, remember? <laughs> you violated the rules, so I had to step in. <laughs> oh, please, Aunt Zelda. Talk Aunt Hilda into helping me. Well, uh, sorry, Sabrina, but uh, she is bigger than I. Oh, dear. Well, I'll just have to do my best. The first stage is connected to the second stage. The second stage is connected to the third stage. The first stage is connected to the fourth stage. The fourth stage is connected to the fifth stage. The fifth stage is connected to the sixth stage. The wind must have blown the door. Unlocked. The eighth stage is connected, connected to the ninth stage. The ninth stage is connected to the... The ninth stage? Tenth stage! Uh-oh. Uh, hi, Mr. Weatherby. Yeah. 
I did not see that, did I? See what, Mr. Weatherby? I think I'll go lie down. Now, where did the Weatherby boys go? In the sky, into the bird. Yeah! It's a plane. Yeah! It's a rocket. Martians, maybe. Yeah! There they are. I wonder what the Martians look like. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Up, two, three, four. Who are we for? Riverdale! 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 Hi! Now to straighten things out. Oops! Oh no! They're going into the auditorium. The PTA is in there. Oh, Sabrina! Whoops! Have you seen those Weatherby brothers? Um, well. Oh, they're in there! Juggling? How oh, uncouth! Hello, Hello there, there, Riverdale PTA. PTA. We're, We're glad, glad to be here today. We planned a yearly schedule of activities where certain will raise money for the treasury. Oh, brother. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, I'm due at the PTA meeting in the auditorium. I'll just sneak around and enter the stage door. Oh, boy. Sabrina, this is it. Think fast. I've got to get inside that stage door. Now for some split-second timing. So, there's our plan now. Take it or leave it. Well, oops. We're being called out of town. You better believe it! Oops! I beg your pardon. I thought I bumped into someone. Hello, Sabrina. Goodbye, Mr. Weatherby. Poor Mr. Weatherby. When the PTA, Miss Grundy, and the school board finish with him for his brothers disrupting the school... It'll be all your fault for not following the witch's handbook, Sabrina. Rule 54321. No doing good deeds. Poor Sabrina. Serves you right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Hey, Sabrina! Yoo-hoo! Have you heard? The PTA flipped over Mr. Weatherby's brothers and their suggestions. The science class has taken on a new meaning for the kids. The, the first, first stage connected to the second stage. stage. The, the second, second stage connected to the third stage. Golly, oh, what about Miss Grundy? She's got a crush on Mr. Weatherby's brothers. You are Weatherby boys. <laughs> Come on, Sabrina. The gang's headed for Pops. Well, I guess things turned out all right at that. Nuts. Well, you can't win them all. Oh, what is it? Look. Oops! In our haste, we must have created a sea weatherby. Oh, don't worry. I'll fix that. Back to where you came from, dear. Hmm. Will wonders ever cease? I didn't know I had any brothers. I'll have to ask my sister Bessie. She should be arriving any moment by bus from Des Moines. Oh, no! Here I go again. I found it, Harvey. The answer is the Roman Empire. It is? Golly, Sabrina, this ancient history homework sure takes a lot of time looking up the answers. Too bad there isn't an easier way. Hmm. Maybe there is. Maybe there is. Just a second, Harvey. I'll call you back. Ziggory Zay, Ziggory Zick, come here, Cousin Ambrose. I need you quick. <laughs> and gal, sir. Oh, oh, yes, Sabrina, my dear. Cousin Ambrose, we need an authority on ancient history. I'd love to help, my dear. However, I am in the midst of a battle with the Sheriff of Nottingham, and I can't run out on Robin and his merry man. Oh. But I shall be glad to provide you with a substitute, one who is as well-versed on ancient history as I. Ta-ta. <laughs> oh, goody. Ooh. <laughs> The history isn't that ancient. Cousin Ambrose! Cousin Ambrose! Come back! There's your manners, you 
big ape. Mm. I don't think he ever had any. I tried all night to get Cousin Ambrose to return. He's the only one who can send Ugg back into time. He'd better hurry before Ugg eats us out of house and home. <laughs> But Aunt Hilda, I'm finder is keepers. <laughs> Why didn't you call me back last night, Sabrina? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Harvey, but um, we had an unexpected visitor. Oh? <laughs> Who's that? That's the unexpected visitor. Hey, neat! A real live hippie! You might say the original one. <laughs> Golly, I can't take you into class like that. That's better. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Randy. <laughs> Ooh, ugh. Uh, what's this? You're new here, aren't you? <laughs> I've heard of sinking your teeth into a good book, but this is ridiculous. Oh dear. You'd better stay out of sight for a while, Ugg. Now, in you go. Cousin Ambrose, where are you? Please come here, Cousin Ambrose. Oh, Ugg, bring back those lockers. Bring them back. Ugg! Here, here now. Ugg, you put those school lockers right back this instant. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, we'll have no more of that. Hello, Sabrina. Uh, hi, Mr. Weatherby. Say, uh, who is Ugg? He is. Mm. Uh, oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Ugg. Ugg, you've changed back into your caveman suit. Uh. Ugg, come back. <laughs> you didn't see a thing. You didn't see a thing. I didn't see a thing. I didn't see a thing. Like the heck I didn't. No! Did Ugg go? Did you see what I see? I see a chance to get even with a certain witch cat. for fixing that dinosaur's rex. Oh, that. There you are. Thanks. 
citizens, you know. Don't fret, dear. I'm sure you'll manage until I get out. I hope so. How'd you make out, Sabrina? Not so good, I'm afraid. It looks like we've got 60 more days of UG. UG? UG. Wait, maybe we won't have it so bad at that. A little bit. At all. What kind of magic did you use on him, Sabrina? None. None? None? Nope. Look, it's almost time now. biggest Christmas sale. Now through Wednesday, you'll find all the new items your kids want most at super low prices. Dolls, electronic talking dolls, action figures and vehicles, home computers and video games, board games, bikes, even race and train sets. And your lift, and your circular, and Peyton's Christmas sale. Fort Kirium, from fort to town to battleground. Brave star. Fort Kirium, Marshall Brave Stars into Galactic Town. Laser fire tanks, tanks, suits, invisible electronic beams at the target. The bank explodes, but Brave Star strikes back and the town transforms into... A fort of plastic! Brave Star hits the control. The wall falls. Fort Kirium, the fort that transforms into a space town with a bank, command center, and chain. New from Brave Star. Batteries not included. Toys sold separately as every required. Hey, I hope you guys still like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But at boom... Original piece of artwork by Archie artist Craig Boldman. 
uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch with my favorite witch, Satana from Marvel Comics. Um, one's for my wife, one's for me. So we're going to keep it in the universe. We're doing some groovy ghoulies. Bringing you the groovy ghoulies, the spinoff of Sabrina. Um, and you know what? I watch Groovy Ghoulies, never even thought about it being a spinoff, even though she appears. Don't even know why. But Groovy Ghoulies was definitely in repeats when I was a kid, because man, this came out before. This is this is Bre Groovy Ghoulies and Sabrina Teenage Witch is BP before Paul. Uh, so <laughs> we're bringing you Groovy Ghoulies in this episode, Cling Clang. Enjoy. Everybody show. Come on now, sing out. It's time for the ghoulies get together. They got jokes for everyone. With laughter songs and fun. So let's go to the ghoulies get together. Come on, everybody, join the ghoulies. They're gonna do their thing for you. They're kind of strange, but they're real fun. is driving me batty! Tell me, Wolfie, what does the Hunchback of Notre Dame do for a sore throat? Like he gargoyles twice a day. You show me a ghost at a rock and roll concert, and I'll show you the Phantom of the Uproar! <laughs> Bella, who did Bonaparte the skeleton marry? Oh, didn't you hear? His high skull sweetheart. <laughs> now where did they dig up that one? Hey, Hauntleroy, what goes ho, 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 thump? I don't know. What does go ho, 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 thump? <laughs> Santa Claus laughing his head off. Ho, 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 you know. Hello, Count Drac. You're the guy who threw the creepy halls of Horrible Hall. Come along now. We'll start right here with the lobby. Just stalk this way. Now here we have our love seat. And I must warn you, don't stand too close. It's very affectionate. Yeah, uh, you see what I mean? And here we have our own gluttonous gardenia Orville, the thing-eating plant. Orville has just one bad habit. He can't stop biting his nails. And here we have the scalivator. Wolfrey, how many times have I told you no driving in the lobby? Now don't panic, Jack Baby. I was just showing Frankie here my convertible wolf wagon. Looky. Real hairy, huh, man? Hey, a roo -roo. Looks like Orville's having a lunch. Lunch. Ho 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 ho. Now get that monstrosity out of here. Drag baby, you are just like not with it, man. Oh, that wolfie is driving me up the wall. 
He's driving him up the wall. That's a goodie. A rupee! You can just drop me anywhere, Wolfie. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? Hey, man, that Frankie's like out of sight. <laughs> Let me see. Who can I bug next? Saturday driver! Horrible Hall, Bella La Ghost Play Spooking. Oh, sorry, all the lines are tied up right now. <laughs> Driving up the down staircase, huh? You'll get 30 days for this. <laughs> Just goes to show you, man, never trust anyone over 3,000. You dig? That Wolfie's Wolf Wagon is almost human. Come to think of it, so is Wolfie. Which reminds me, it's time for my weekly lesson in training your pet. Here, Rover. Here, fellow. You will notice how quickly he responds to my call. The first thing to teach your pet is to fetch a stick. This one will do nicely. Now watch closely, Rover, my boy. There. Can you do that? <laughs> I don't believe you've quite grasped the idea. Let's try it with this bone. Oops, a daisy. I might have known you'd be behind this, you bald head. Hmm, perhaps I better teach you to beg instead. Come on, fella. Bag. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. <coughs> Here you are, fella. Good boy, Rover. It takes so little to make the poor creatures happy. One, two, three. There's a game that you all know, and it's called hide and seek. But never play with ghouls and ghosts, because they always peek. They walk through doors, come up through floors, and always find you out. To let you see just what I mean, just listen to them count. Oh, one, two, three, you can't hide from me. One, two, three, now just you wait and see. One, two, three, you can't hide from me. No matter what you I'm gonna find you. <laughs> they get help from other ghosts, ones that you can't see. They'll sit back and point you out, you know how ghosts can be. They can make you laugh or scream, just when you don't want to. They'll make you slip, and make you trip, and pretty soon they've got you. Ah, one, two, three. What you do, I'm gonna find you. One, two, three. You can't hide from me. One, two, three. Just you wait and see. One, two, three. You can't hide from me. No matter what you do, I'm gonna find you.
Listen, Drac, how does King Kong like his steak? I don't know. How does King Kong like his steak? Medium roar! <laughs> Sabrina, do you know what you get when you cross a jellyfish with an electric eel? No, what? Current jelly. I needed that. I have been told I have the face of a 16-year-old girl. Well, you better give it back. <laughs> You're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> I always lose my head to heavy traffic. Ask it, casket. Why is it good to have a card game in a cemetery? Because you can always dig up an extra player. Say, go ahead. Would you like to have your paw bread? I sure would. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I hear Bonaparte the skeleton backed into Agatha's freezer. Man, oh man, that must have been a spine-chilling experience. Lucky for Drac, Orville likes a light lunch. Giddy up, Rube Hilda. We gotta get going. <laughs> you must learn to stop flying off the handle like that. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, I just haven't been my own self lately. Why not try this medicine boy? Oh, thank you, Doc. I feel better already. Hi there. It's time once again for the Mummy Zoo's wrap-up. Dateline, Egypt, land of the ancient pharaohs, you know. Today, Professor Sigmund Braunschweiger unearthed the tomb of King Tut Tut Shame Shame. <laughs> when asked if he was worried about the legendary King Tut Tut's curse, Professor Braunschweiger answered, What curse? <laughs> That's about the size of it. Dateline, Outer Mongolia. Thanks to the abominable snowman, skier Fritz Meyer today set a new record for the ski jump. 3,252 feet straight up. 4,512 feet straight down. Now there is a guy I really dig, dig, dig. Well, that wraps up another Mummy's Wrap-Up. Till next time, good nightmare. <laughs> oh, dear. So much for the news. Now back to work. <laughs> work. There's the telephone that someone wants to tell it to Bella. Hello, Bella the Ghostly Spooking. What's that? You say your problem is you're a vampire with weak eyes and can't see what you're biting? Oh, simple. Buy a pair of glasses for your eye teeth. Believe me, a vampire's eye teeth are worth looking into. Boy, have I got a problem. What's wrong, Bonaparte? It's dogs. They're always trying to bully me. Nobody is safe on the streets nowadays. Well, no wonder you're nothing but bones. Here, slip this on. Here? In front of everybody? You can change behind that screen. I hope it fits. I wear a 38 Squatty. Hey, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> I should have.
had mentioned it was a mailman's uniform. Mailman? Oh, neato, bedito. Now there's a job you can really sink your teeth into. Looks like those dogs have a bone to pick with them. <laughs> hey, Ratso, smells like Haggith has cooked our favorite dish, toadstool cream pie. <laughs> yeah, Batso, let's go swipe it. Uh-oh, looks like she was expecting us. Well, don't worry. I got a plan. Yeah, Fido! Lunch time! <laughs> Cute little Limperini! Fido's the only flying piranha in captivity! <laughs> Follow us, pal! There's a lot more goodies where that come from! A boy and his fish, golly, that gets me right here. Or was it here? <laughs> that pie is as good as I saw already. Ah, I'm gonna tell Cousin Hagatha what those scoundrels are up to. Oh, good boy, Fido. <laughs> Shut the door! You want those dogs to find me? Aha! Aha! Trying to steal my toadstool cream pie, eh? Gloop! Say, I told you! There's only one thing to do. Anyone who likes it that much deserves to have all he can eat. <laughs> hey, what about me? Don't I get a bite? You sure do, Hot Roy. Go get him, Fido. Help! Ouch! Ouch! Oh, Mama! My golly, a boy and his fish. It kind of gets me right here. Or was it here? This week, we dug up a really cool group, the Bare Bones Band. That music sure gets under your skin. What key do they play in? The skeleton key. What else? You sit in your room in a world full of gloom, just wondering what you're gonna do. You're all alone when you stay. No wonder that you're feeling blue Here comes a postman He's really the most man Looks like he's got a letter for you Don't get excited But you've been invited To the first annual seminar for Combination celebration Yes. 
see You say hello and the next thing you know You're really having such a good time Flying around, ten feet off of the ground On a broom and a sprinkle and sunshine Before you know what the party is over It's really sad that you have to leave But you won't forget all the night that you met At the first annual semi-formal combination celebration Me and my holiday party This Christmas, get a $5 rebate on the Posable My Child doll with the softest skin and the sweetest eyes. And a $3 rebate on My Child's Aprica Stroller, just like the real one. I love it. And play dress up for less at Toys R Us with Mattel's My Child Party Time Fashions. It's the world's biggest toy store. Let's go. Electronic game with the talking phone to win cool guys get clues figure out which guy really likes you He's not wearing a hat. Bye guys. What he say? My secret. Ah, you. He's not at the beach. See you later Guys, guys. <laughs> It's Dan! Dan, my man! You're right. I really like you. Yes! <laughs> Dream phone the hot electronic talking phone game. It's for you Hey, hope you guys still liking the groovy ghoulies. I I I like Groovy Ghoulies, man. I, I liked all these cartoons back in the day when they would put, uh, you know, freaking essentially musical numbers in the middle of them like they did with uh, freaking Scooby-Doo and, and all these Jabberjaw. They always put a, a musical scene in the middle. I don't know. I think they were Bollywood for some reason. So, yet again, keeping in that universe, we're doing some Archie. Um, you know, I, I, I recently discovered, rediscovered Archie comics. Um, I said that those life with Archies and stuff like that. Um, there was a couple other ones they did, like, uh, when, uh, uh, Adam Hughes did, uh, Betty and Veronica. That was fun. Um, you know, those were fun. And then, uh, of course the chilling and the, the, the horror Archie comics, um, got me back into it. There's something whole when they take the wholesome comics. <clears throat> I like the horror aspect of the wholesome comics. I like it, but when they take the wholesome comics, you know, I, I, I I'm not gonna lie. Watched Riverdale first season. Couldn't get into any of the seasons after that. I uh, did like watching Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Love that. Um, but something about recent Archie just just got me so. This is Archie's. This is episode five. Uh, this is Flying Saucer Field Trip, a.k.a. The Picnic. Enjoy. Archie's 
cheer Betty's here, Veronica too And then she's here Hey Jughead, where are you? We want to dance and we want to sing Have some fun and go adventuring All our friends are here But it ain't complete We ain't the Archies Without the Jughead Bee Hi! Riverdale High is throwing a costume dance tomorrow night with a prize for the best costume. I hear Jughead considered going as a hamburger, but the onions kept making his eyes water. <laughs> Right, Fred. It's just Archie and his school friends. They're trying to come up with costume ideas for the school dance. I hope they come up with something before the ceiling comes down. Will the crowd sees my costume. I'm sure to win first prize. I'll get it, dear. Hello, Mr. Andrews. Hello, Reggie. <laughs> no, Mary, that's the first time I've seen that boy without his hair pasted down with greasy kid stuff. <laughs> It's a swell costume, Reggie, but... Well? We were just considering going as a group. Yeah, and share first prize if we win. Are you with us, Reg? Are you kidding? Most certainly not. With this costume, I'm sure to win, and I'm not sharing first prize with anyone. Good night, Mr. Andrews. <laughs> Good night, Reggie. He's pasted his hair down again. Well, that narrows our group down to four. With Reggie so sure he'll win, it hardly seems worth trying to come up with a costume. I got it. Let's go as the four losers. Very, Very funny. funny. <laughs> well, what you got there, hot dog? Hey, by golly, you've done it. What is it, Archie? Hey, men from Mars. Groovy. Why not? We can even fix my car up as a flying saucer. Cool. That'll give old Red some competition. That's what they think. Oh, uh, are you still hanging around, Reggie? <laughs> well, that just about does it, Arch. It's just too, too. Real boss, Arch. Thanks, girls. If that's not way out, I don't know what is. Did you girls finish the costumes? All done, Archie. Keen. We didn't forget you, hot dog. Here. How about that? I always wondered what the world looked like to a goldfish. When we get the rest of our outfits on, we'll be all set to go. Hmm. Archie and Jug did do a convincing job on that flying saucer, and those are good costumes. Convincing flying saucer. Hmm. Say, that could be the answer to my winning the costume prize. Hop in, girls. Standing by for blast off. All aboard for the moon, Jupiter, Mars, and Riverdale High. Hello, uh, Riverdale Police. I, I just saw a margin flying saucer headed down Pear Street toward Peach. Uh, you, you better hurry. It looks like an invasion force. Now to take my time getting to the dance and pick up first prize. Uh, what did Archie and his wrecking crew finally decide on for costumes, dear? Oh, I don't know, Fred. I was so busy with the dishes when they left, I didn't notice. Here's a news bulletin. A Martian flying saucer invasion of Riverdale has just been reported. Hmm. Oh, Fred, the children, the school dance. Oh, my goodness. Those poor Martians. <laughs> This is car four, moving east on beach, approaching pair. No sign of UFO, proceeding north to Apple. Over. Oh, ow! Did somebody give me a hand? What's wrong, Juggy? I was just snacking on a banana and my hand got stuck. <laughs> you! Thanks, Betty. Hmm, a siren. I'd better pull over. 
Stop at that service station, Arch. I want to wash my hands. Yeah, I can use some air in my tires, too. Hurry, boys. We don't want to be late. Now, this is car four proceeding north on FO. Just spotted UFO moving east on a banana. <laughs> Watch it, Charlie! <laughs> Car four, what happened? We just went into a slippery spin. On banana? Hmm, that figures. No fooling. They must have used some kind of spin ray on us. Who knows what kind of weapons they have? Come on, Charlie, let's take cover. Can't you hurry with those tires, Archie? I'm hurrying, Ronnie. Hey, Art. The station attendant took one look at me and said something about taking me to his leader. And then he ran off. A flat! Let's take cover further back, Charlie. They're shooting. Let's walk, Betty. Yeah, we'll never get to the dance at this rate. I think I'll take a shortcut across the park to Apple. Yeah. Let's get out of here. We'll meet you boys at the dance. Don't take too long. We'll be right there. Car four to headquarters. They're too much for us. Send help. Quick, the Martians have freed the animals. Apes are running loose in the park. No wonder. They're animals themselves. I wonder if those policemen were looking for Archie and his Martians. <laughs> Sounds like the whole police force is out. The saucer's headed toward Riverdale High. Riverdale police are swarming toward Apple and Banana Streets like flies. That's what we get for naming streets after fruit trees. <laughs> Fred, please. This is frightening. I've just been handed a bulletin. The Martians have been captured just outside Riverdale High School. Our mobile unit is just approaching the scene. There now, dear. Shortly, you'll see that this whole thing has been a silly hoax. Look, Fred, there's one of the Martians. They're taking off his helmet. He gads. It's not a hoax. Look at that hideous face. Fred, that's Jughead Jones. And there's Archie. And now, before I award the prize for the best costume, I think I should mention that tonight shall more than likely go down in history of Riverdale as the night Riverdale proved that the Martians had better not land here. <laughs> I heard that the news spread clear across the country. Really? The press wants more pictures of us in our flying saucer, Arch. And now, because of such convincing costumes, the award goes to Veronica, Betty, Archie, Jughead, and Hot Dog. On behalf of the rest, thank you, Mr. Weatherby, and I'd like to congratulate our Riverdale Police Department for an excellent job and the manner in which they handled the situation. Oh, yes, and to Reggie Mantle, whom the police say admitted he was the one who tipped them off. Somebody let me out of here. I'm not an ape. There are no marshes. Now let me out or I'll be late for winning the best costume award. <laughs> time for the Archie Dance of the Week. In just a few moments, the gang and I will show you another brand new groovy dance step that you can all watch and learn. So, don't go away. And now, a brand new dance to watch and learn. The Stick Shift. Jump one straight ahead, and now you're in first, jump twice, straight back. And now you're in second, jump straight to the right. And now you're in third, then twice, straight back. And now you're in fourth, now jump to the middle. That's neutral. And that's the stick shift. Let's dance it to a brand new song. Well, it's a candy apple hunker with a couple brown vinyl top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How a disc 
takes what it takes to make it stop. I put my friends in the back seat, me in the front seat, my baby at my side. And we just fly, fly, fly. Son of a gun, got a 411 rear and it's lightened by a half a ton. It's got a human reaction and pies attraction, can't make it slide. And we just ride, 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 ride. Woo! Now, well, the seats, I'm told, are leather, and the steering wheel is made of wood. It'd like to want to fly, and you know sometimes I think it could. I got a new set of drag wheels, you know they're mad wheels, 11 inches wide. And we just ride, 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 ride. Miss Grundy sure hands out some dillies of assignments. I'm supposed to use defeat, defense, and detail in a sentence. Defeat, defense, detail. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Defeat of the cat went over defense before detail. <laughs> Hi, gang. Riverdale science class is going on a field trip to the mountains. Why don't you join us? We shall be arriving at our mountain destination in a few moments, class. And may I once again remind you that we all stay close together as we embark on an adventure amongst nature's wonderland in the wild. Correct, Mr. Weatherby? Uh, correct, Miss Grundy. Big deal. The first prize of an A for the day will be awarded to the finder of the most unusual phenomenon of nature in nature's very own backyard, where nature's little creatures are... Boy, being a stowaway on a school bus ain't easy. <laughs> Isn't easy. Together! Miss Grumpy, isn't this going a bit too far? Ah, at last, the great outdoors! Well, well, a stowaway, eh? Oh, oh, caught any act? Don't worry, hot dog, I'll keep your little secret. And since you caught me lagging behind, I'll let you in on my secret. I'm going to create some really unusual phenomenons of nature. <laughs> Something tells me I should have stayed in the bus. When I finish with this gay little outing, everyone will think they've made the best find of the day. <laughs> Genuine teensy flies. Oh, boy. Hey, Arch, wait up. Oh, what is it, Jug? Hey, what's in a box? I caught some genuine, honest to goodness, teensy flies. Really? Wait till Miss Grundy sees this. Oh, Jughead, you silly boy. That's not teensy flies. They're just common, ordinary gnats. Gnats? They're teensy flies. Gnats. Teensy flies. Gnats. Teensy flies. Gnats. Okay, okay, have it your way. Teensy flies to me, gnats to you. <laughs> Jughead, you, you! Take it easy! <laughs> Go get him, Veronica! <laughs> Miss Grundy! No. No, where did 
where'd she go to? Oh, a frog must have accidentally jumped into that old paper bag. Now there's an unusual phenomenon. A hostel bag? Where did you go? Baggy, baggy, baggy. Don't look now, but Reggie has hooked a live one. Hey, Baggy. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, Miss Grundy, uh, would you hold this for me? Oh, why, certainly, Reginald. Uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Weatherby's looking for you. He is. Aha, there's the bag. Oh, really? Please, Miss Grundy, th that's not what I meant. <laughs> Listen, Archie, I hear a stream nearby. Yeah, maybe we can find some fish eggs. Watch this, hot dog. Look, Betty, there's some fish eggs down there. I can't see them. Where? Well, look closer, down there. Oh! Gee, <laughs> Betty, you didn't have to look that close. You did that on purpose, Archie Andrews. Yeah. There, I told you, it must have been a goat. Well, all right, this time. <laughs> I'm certainly glad we straightened out our little misunderstanding, Miss Grundy. You have my sincerest apologies, Mr. Weatherby. I'm going to find an anthill and get some photos. <laughs> mm, now, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes, I was looking at this teeny bug. Eh, it's looking back! It's just me, Miss Grundy. Oh, Reginald. I just thought I should warn you, there's a goat in these parts, and it's running around butting people into streams and such. You don't say. Well, I'll be on the alert for it, Reginald. Thank you. Forget it. Oh, hi, Mr. Weatherby. Uh, you looking for something? Uh, yes, Reggie. Ants. Gee, I saw a bunch up in that bush back there a bit. Thanks, Reggie. You're a great help. That must definitely be a bugus biomitis. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, take that, you old goat. <laughs> really, Miss Grundy? Can't you forgive and forget? Come on, hot dog. Now for some real fun. Oh, why did I have to stow away on that bus and become a partner to crime? Surely justice will prevail in the end. <laughs> You pushed me into that stream, Archie Andrews. Wait a minute, gang. What's going on around here? What was supposed to be a friendly and scientific trip has turned into a regular brawl. Yeah, half the kids are sore at each other, and Mr. Weatherby isn't speaking to Miss Grundy. Hey, hot dog, you can't back out now. My life of crime is over. I'm giving myself up. Hot dog! Hey, he must have stowed away on the bus. Say, Hot Dog, what do you know about all those strange happenings? Of course! <laughs> Reggie! <laughs> Come on, gang, let's follow. Forget the apologies, Miss Grundy. What's one more lump? Now I have a match set. Wow! Oh, wow. A bear! Hang on, Miss Grundy. I'll save you. <laughs> <laughs> Hush up, hot dog. I knew you'd come back. So you see, Mr. Weatherby, we have reason to believe uh, someone is behind all those strange happenings. Reggie Gantle? Of course. Look, a bear! I'll take care of this. How dare you disrupt our little field trip, Reginald Mantle? Shame, shame, shame on you! Wait, Miss Grundy, that's not me, it's a real bear! Good heavens! Run for your lives, class! Wait, gang, look! The, the bear's placing the blame where it really belongs! This. Everything sure turned out for the best. It certainly did, Archie. The A for the day goes to Mr. B for bear. 
Imagine that. A guided tour of the forest by Mr. Bear himself. <laughs> you might say this is a typical happy ending. That is, for some of us. Nickelodeon's new game show, Finders Keepers, all about? It's easy. All you gotta do is find the hidden pictures. Hot dog is correct. Find the hidden clues. Is it the comb? Is it the comb? It is the comb for 50 bucks. Keep the cash. Keep the prizes. Keep it all. All right, you ready to go? All right. Find it. Finders Keepers. Find it every weekday at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock Central, only on Nickelodeon. Welcome to Woolworth, where there's always something worth shopping for. Doll cases? Every little girl's favorites, including baby doll, wardrobe trunk, and My Little Pony collector's case. Your choice, $10.99. Cassette recorders. Dual deck star studio from Child Guidance with microphone and headset, now $69.99. Playboards? Sure. Brand new, with lots of magnetic action. Junior sets, just $5. Deluxe sets, $10. Right now at Woolworth, where shopping for values is a tradition. Hey, I hope you guys liked or are still liking the Archie. Uh, you know, I always talk about this. Does anybody, anybody out there, I got almost 6,000 people watching it. Does anybody know anybody who won the bicycle from Marvel Comics? I, I just wonder if anybody ever won these because you never heard about it. So, I don't know. But... We're going to keep chugging right along in the same universe, but from a different production company. So Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, Josie and the Pussycats definitely, when it came out, was different than the uh, um, the Archies. Because this comes out a few years later. Uh, Sabrina, Groovy Ghoulies 1970, Archies 1968, Josie and the Pussycats a little bit later. <clears throat> Man, they, they really thought, they, they always try to bring back, bring back the Archies every once in a while. Um, you know, we had the Archies, we had Sabrina, we had Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the, the Melissa Joan Hart one. Uh, then we had uh, Little Archie, or uh, the, the the New Archies, which is them as, as uh, uh, tweens. Uh, you had uh, Archie's uh, Weird Mysteries. I like that. That was one of the ones that uh, relatively recently... Was, I think it was on Sunday in our market. So, but here you guys go. This is Josie and the Pussycats. This is episode 11. All Wong in Hong Kong. Yeah, that would not fly in today's. Nope. So, here you guys go. Josie and the Pussycats. Enjoy. <laughs> What's this? A toy soldier? <sighs> Look, Samant. The vapor has put him to sleep. Quickly, let us get the coin. Like, wow! Isn't it great to be going to exotic Hong Kong? I can hardly wait for our gig at Queen Victoria Park. Well, all this sea breeze and hot air has made me hungry. Give me some coins, brother. I want to find a snack bar. Gimme, gimme. Is that all you think of? Wait, I'll go with you. <laughs> 
With this coin, I shall soon rule all of Asia. Oh! Hey, why don't you watch where you're standing, Buster? Come on, Melody, help me pick up our coins. One moment, please. One of those coins is mine. Oh, you poor man. Here, take this one. <laughs> oh, come on, Melody. This is not the ancient coin. Well, this sure is a funny-looking dime. I think I'll keep it. <laughs> the blonde one has the coin. I must get it back at all costs. Checked in. Groovy, now let's check out the sights. Phone call for Missy Melody. Phone call for Missy Melody. Missy Melody? I wonder who that is. That's you, Melody. Go answer the ding-a-ling, you ding-a-ling. Okay. Hello? You have a rare coin which I wish to purchase. Will you please speak up? I can't hear you. You have a rare coin which I wish to purchase. Please, don't talk so loudly. I can't hear my phone call. The coin is in your pocket. No, your other pocket. Is this it? Yes. I will pay you a fortune for it. Oh, goody. I like fortunes. Where will I meet you? Here are the directions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye. What do you mean someone wants to tell your fortune for that coin? Or was it pay me a fortune? Pay a fortune? That's more like it. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's find out. Yuck. Are you sure this back alley is where you're supposed to meet him? According to the instructions, it is. Maybe this is him now. Give me the coin, Melody. I, Alexander Cabot III, will drive a hard bargain. Good day, sir. You appear to be a man with the impeccable good taste of a coin connoisseur. What is your opening bid for this rare and exotic... I will take that. Hey, how about our payment, you creep? This will be your payment. Oh, what cute toys. <laughs> Smile. That's the last picture you will ever take. Hey, those toys are pointing their arrows at us. Look out. I think it's time we cut out of here. Let's go. Hey, wait for me! Those meddling kids took a picture of me. Get them before they can take it to the authorities, or my plans will be ruined. Oh, here they come! Into 
that department store gang. They can't drive in here. Now what? Those goons are right behind us. Let's split up and pretend to be sales clerks. Good idea. I'll hide, uh, I mean work in the sports department. You'd feel more at home in the poultry department, you chicken. They are in the store. After them. Uh, size 86 dress, ma'am? Uh, mm, uh... I have something which will look utterly divine on you, ma'am. <laughs> See, ma'am? Hit you like a tent. Uh, she means glove. I'll take it. Yikes! So will we! Pardon me, sir. Would you help me with this zipper? <laughs> oh, no! You just blew our cover, Melody. Let's go! Are you interested in a motorbike? <laughs> I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs> Yikes! Look out, Ted! Thanks for the ride, Alex. Likewise. <laughs> wigs! Wigs! Get your glamour wigs! Don't overdo it, Alexandra. We're supposed to be hiding. Don't worry, funny face. No one will find you. Now, what's the big idea? Yikes! It's him! Quick, into the toy department. Yikes! Hang on! Look out, Alex! Here come the others! I'll get them! Charge this merchandise to my father's account! Well, we got away! I wonder what that creep and his goon wants with us. Who knows? Let's just hope that's the last we see of them. So sorry, Honorable Serpent, but the agile youngsters escaped. No matter. One of my special toys will finish them off. Perceive. They will be playing at Queen Victoria Park tonight. You come a long way, babe, from my own neighborhood. Just like a movie star, you sure are looking good. Now's my chance to get away from this horrible music and get Alan away from Josie at the same time. Hey, we're moving. Relax, Alan, dear. The further we're away from Josie, the better she sounds. Excellent. They are playing right into my hands. My toy submarine will destroy them with its homing torpedo. of the one that's causing all the trouble. To the police station, Alex. Why do I have to pull this dumb rickshaw? Because, dear brother, when we're in danger, 
danger, you can run faster than anyone. Oh, very funny. Can't you go any faster than this? Yeah, even that model plane is gaining on us. Model plane? Everybody duck! to the police station. Not on my leg power. Hey, taxi! To the police station, my good man. And hurry! Hey, driver. You just passed the police station. <gasps> it's him again. We can't get out. The doors are locked. Well, just for that, let's refuse to give him a tip. <laughs> It figures that that creep would live in a toy factory. But, but, but what does he want with us? I think we'll soon find out. It is unfortunate that you have meddled in the plans of the serpent. P -p -p plans What plans? My factory conceals an ancient Chinese temple. And this coin is part of the temple's secret. Secret? Yes. Once every 300 years, at midnight, the moon is in a perfect position to unlock that secret. And tonight is the night. And according to my cuckoo watch, cuckoo, it's exactly midnight. Excellent. Now observe. When I place the coin in the hands of this jade statue, the moon's rays are reflecting off the coin and onto the sun god plaque. It's opening! There's a secret compartment inside. Success! This ancient Chinese scroll gives me the power to control all of Asia. But what are you gonna do with us? You meddlers will be disposed of. D -d disposed of? Well, if I'm going to be disposed of, I want to look my best. <laughs> Good show. Let's go. Serpent, they have escaped into the toy factory. No matter. My giant soldier toys will find them. <laughs> Look, he has life-size toys searching for us. It's up to you and me, Alexander. We gotta knock the stuffing out of them. We, we, we do? Relax, Alexander. Maybe they'll knock the chicken out of you. Here they come. Let's go, Alex. Not me. Yes, you. Oh, be careful, Alan. Watch out, Alex. I'm watching. I'm watching. There. We did it. Nice work, guys. Now that we got them, what do we do with them? Well, they're going to help us put the serpent out of business. How do we look, Alan? You both look great. Now remember, act like toys. 
By the time you get back with the serpent, we'll have these toys rewired to fix his goose. My toys should have found those meddlers by now. Perhaps they have, Serpent. Look, they are returning. We have found the intruders. You will follow us, please, and make it snappy. <laughs> Melody, shh. Ouch! This way, please. Oh, here they come. The control box is almost ready. I hope you did it exactly the way I told you. I never make mistakes. Watch. See? I told you I could fix it properly. Help! 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 So, we have been tricked. Yikes! You goofed again, Alexandra. to the police. We wish to thank you for capturing the serpent and returning the ancient coin. All in a day's work. Speaking of coins, give me some, dear brother. All that running around has made me hungry. I'm going to the snack bar and get some food. Oh! Excuse me, miss. Why don't you watch where you're standing, Buster? Uh-oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, we made this scene before. Let's get out of here. Hey, wait for me! You'll meet the strangest people in Hong Kong.
poppers to put you into the action. The racing action. You can rev them up. That button. That's big rig racing. That's turbo sound. There are three big rig clutch poppers, each sold separately. New from Tonka. Over here, I'm a boglin. Me and my buddies need a place to hide out. <laughs> Come a little closer. Oh, did I scare you? Oh, I do that so well. If you take us home, we'll kiss your Aunt Martha. <laughs> we'll eat your peas. And we hope you know lots of girls. Hey, the name's Boglins. You sold separately, and we're looking for good homes. Maybe yours. <laughs> You know, not gonna lie, like the Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, I'm a big fan of the new of the movie uh, Rosario Dawson. So we're gonna keep it going. We're going to another standalone universe, uh, and that is the Mork and Mindy Laverne and Shirley Fonzie Hour. You all guys seem to like this one. Um, <clears throat> fun cartoon. I liked it, and uh, I'm glad I've been able to find this for you and bring it in its almost our entirety. So here you guys go. This is episode five. Nanu, nanu. <laughs> Yes, your immenseness? You won't learn anything about that planet playing games. Go enroll in school. So I can learn to play games? No, I mean a regular school. Now go find yourself a place to stay and get hoppy. Just make yourself at home, Mork. do all the work. Mork, I've got a bigger problem than cleaning Dad's store. What's that, little mama? Hamilton invited me to his party at Boulder Lake Marina, and I want you to be my date. Gosh, Mind, I can't do that. I promised your dad I'd clean up. Oh, Mork, you've got to take me. If I'm alone, old fish-faced Hamilton will get romantic with me, and yuck, I'd rather kiss a squid. This is a bigger problem. Ah, but I've got the solution, Min. You wait in my aid car with Doing, and I'll be out in the stiffy and drive you to the marina. Uh, let Mindy know my plan. Splitting in two is a big Orkin secret. One of me will take Mindy to the marina while the other stays here. Now for the secret split. Zeno, Zeno, Zeno. Ooh. Welcome to Earth, other me. <laughs> Your mission is to clean this store while I party with men. Ixnay on that, Dak. You clean, I party with men. <laughs> Yahoo! Let's go mess up the world, babe. That's no way to mop a floor, goofball. What happened? Oh, I scoopballed your loftiness. To you help Mindy, I said, Zeno, 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 and... You what? Mark, you space-happy kumquat. When an orphan splits in two, he becomes both a good person and a bad person. Oh, error. I forgot your rotundity. I know you forgot. The bad Mark is going to do all the rotten things your good nature won't allow. Oh, no. That fiends with Mindy. Your only hope is to catch him. 
Have him say, Zeno, 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 in unison with you. Then you'll become one person again. Oh, get me loose, your humongousness, so I can say my myth, my fate works and... Go! Save your Mindy before it's too late. I hear and obey your humongousness. Well, I'm glad you could come, Mindy, but did you have to bring him along? Get lost, fantasy pants. Mork, we're Hamilton's guests. Let the buffoon speak, Mindy. It only shows his lack of breeding. Oh, yeah? Well, what happened? <gasps> My suit! It'll be ruined if I don't get it clean before the stain set. Oh, what's got into you? You're not acting like the Mork I know. You bet you blame, baby. We split in two and I ditched that goody two-shoes so I can have you all to myself. Oh, no! <laughs> Mork! Is this the real you? My good half, Min. I split in two and my bad half is loose on this ship. I know. He just ruined Hamilton's suit. Oh, terrible event. I must apologize. Oh, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pardon moi. Then get me some cold water before the stain set. Yes, 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 yes. I'm on my way. The water. Did you bring the water? No, but I have on a milkshake instead. Oh! Watch it, you nerd! Quick, get a paper towel! Gold water for Saeed. We don't beat this summer water boy. I clean up your spick and span. The paper towels! Where are the paper towels? Make up your mind, make up your mind. Couldn't find paper towels, so I got sandpaper instead. Sandpaper? Oh! Bring me a needle and a thread, quick! Oh, catastrophe, what happened? Your suit has more holes than a Swiss cheese. You, you maniac! Get the needle and thread already! Needle and thread? You need a loom. I couldn't find a needle and thread. <laughs> so I bought you a stapler instead. Here's a needle and... You... You better believe it, sweet cheeks. What? Uh, there's two of you. Yeah, we split. No, I'm split. Shazbot, I've got to get my other half before he attacks my moon. I knew it. I knew it. He split himself into two nerds. Now's my chance to prove he isn't human. <laughs> when I get a picture of the two of them, I'll expose them both to the whole world. We've got to find your bad half before he wrecks the whole yacht. You've got to be around here somewhere, man. Bang, 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 bang. Shazbot, going with some unglued. The pressure was too much for him. Quick, catch him before somebody spots him. Gotcha. We're not breaking up this act, uh... Oh, well, um, oh, pom pom. <laughs> Yay, team. Block that bleep. Let's all go for an egg cream. <laughs> we gotta find that bad me before he does something rotten. Too late, turkey. I'm already doing something rotten. I'm gonna give these skiers a ride of their lives. <laughs> I gotta stop him. Hang on to doing. I haven't felt this rotten in years. Ah, ah, sailboat. Here I come, sir. She blows by. We gotta catch that miserable bee. <laughs> Here they come. Now to photograph those two nerds and get the food by me. Stop! Stop! That's an order. No way, Jose. I'm having two months fun. Oh, 
Oh, they're coming this way again. This time I'll get their picture for sure. Look out! He ramped it ahead. We're gonna... Are you okay? Takes more than that to hurt Nork and Mindy, but not much more. <laughs> the bad Nork got away. Oh, don't worry, Mind. There's more than one way to grease a banana, as we say out Ork. And I've got a plan that should make him say, Zeno, Zeno, Zeno. Come on. You all set, little mama? Ready, willing, and able. Spiffy, let's go. <laughs> Gotta keep my eyes open or that goody two-shoes will try to catch me again. Bad vibrations. Yeah, well, Marky. Hi, tall, dark, and rotten. What's on your mind, Tut? I ditched the good Mark. He's boring. Good move, kid. Stick with me and we'll go far. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. That's why I wrote you this little love poem, to tell you how I feel. Read it, honey. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I've got a big surprise for you. Sign. Zeno, 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 Zeno. Zeno. Shut that. I've been tricked. You and your little dog, too. Oh, -ho. I finally got you both on film. Now to expose you to everybody. <laughs> Quick, everybody. Over here. I got him. Mork isn't human. There's two of them. I think I got it all on the film. Mork, what do we do now? No perspiration, Min. All Ham needs right now is a little temporary double vision. There isn't one more. There's... Something the matter, Hamilton? Yeah, you look like you're seeing double. <laughs> Yikes! I must have been in the sun too long. I've seen double. <laughs> The dirty, low down, good for nothing, conniving trick you played on Hamilton, and I love you for it. Shucks, Min. Sometimes the best of me needs the worst of me. <laughs> nanu, nanu. Rain spoils annual school picnic. Gosh, Hamilton, I wish we had time to chase down a real new story. We would, if that good-for-nothing Mort would do the dirty work. Now what? Ow! Oh! Oh! It's your fault. Every time you're around, disaster strikes. I'm calling the repairman. And don't touch anything. Oh, you can count on me, boss type person. That does it, you incompetent twit. You're fired from the school paper. Oh, Mark. Oh, bummer, doing. I feel like something the cat threw out. Oh, all I want to do is help Mindy and get a real news story. Oh, gosh. Osho is like super guy. He never goofs up. I told you, Mark. No wishes before 10 a.m. orc time. I'm trying to sleep. Oh, many sorrows, your grogginess. It's just that if I had superpowers like super guy, I could really help my Mindy. Very commendable, Mark. I'll beam you a superpower super guy suit immediately. <laughs> Wow, doing a superpower super guy suit, just like the suit that gives super guys superpowers. Isn't that super? Just don't let it fall into the wrong hands, Mort. You can count on me, your infallibleness. Wow! Finally, a hot scoop. So, what's up, Min? I am after a big story. Someone stolen a Plink's armored truck full of gold. I've got to go. Oh, dramatic. A robber. This is a job for Super Guy. Faster than a speeding ticket. More powerful than a train. Able to leap tall.
<laughs> basket hoops with a single bound. I wonder if Super Guy started this way. Hey, Doyne. I think I'm... Uh -oh, I'm getting the hang of it. Keep your eyes peeled for suspicious truck nappers. Hang on, Doyne. There they are. The perfect heist. Mr. Bing will be proud of us, Speedhead. Wow! That's the stolen Plink's truck. I don't believe what I'm seeing. It's... it's Super Guy. Super Guy to the rescue. Down, down, and away! What was that? I don't know. Looks like some guy in red lawn johns to me. Oh, hey, Slim. Hey, uh, Super Guy, watch out for that building. Building? Where? But the Plink's truck is on the brink of disaster. No! Oh, hey, going. Superheroes even have to rescue super crooks. I got it. I got it. Oh, they got me. Let's scram. This guy's unreal. Super guy, are you all right? Nothing faces a super guy, little lady. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Mindy McConnell, a, a reporter from Mount Mount Mirror. <laughs> and listen, could, could you tell me the secret of your superpowers? Psst. All my superpowers are in my super suit. Wow, what a story! So all your powers are in your suit, huh? Super! Ah, so that's his secret. Come on. When I was 13 years old, my mom bought me my first pair of shorts and... Okay, meathead. I'll make the phone call. You do the rest. Yup, gotcha. When I was 21, I got my first pair of diapers. <laughs> it's for you, super guy. Oh, thank you, little lady person. Be right back, Miss Mindy. This is Super Mor I, I mean, Super Guy. Turn around and look down the street, Super Fool. Your reporter friend is gone. You want to back safe? You show up at the 13th floor of the Black Tower building. Mr. Big will be waiting. I tell you, Mr. Big, this Super Guy is for real. All of his powers are in his super suit. And if we had it, we could bust a divorce like that. He's coming here, and we gotta get his suit. Oh, yeah? Sounds like a lot of hogwash, but... If he can get through my super defenses, then I'll believe you. Yeah, it's the super guy, and he's in the elevator shaft. These crooked crow mugs expect me to strike from above, so I'll surprise him and attack from below. The surprise is on you, Super Guy. We're going up, and the elevator's coming down. Don't panic, little pooch pal. Super Guy can handle this. Down, please. I've come down to your level, Mr. Big. Now surrender in the name of truth, justice, mom, and apple pie. Naughty, naughty, no, no, Mr. Big Person. The superheroes never fall for that old trap door trick. <laughs> Back up, Doyne, quick. I got it, Mr. Big. I got the super suit. Excellent. But that suit will soon own all of Boulder City. Yeah, well, you'll never get away with it, Mr. Big. Behold, I am super big. And now to begin my super crime spree. Throw the girl in the trap and meet me at the gold reserve. <laughs> Get your hands off me, you creep. Hi, Min. Sorry I messed up your rescue. 
Mark? You're the masked hero? Oh, some superhero, man. I, I'm, I'm nothing but a super flop. Orson's gonna splunk me for losing his super suit. Oh, desperation. Uh, uh, oh, I feel like the walls are closing in around me. They are. Mork, get a hold of yourself. Thanks, Min Min. I needed that. And now for a brainstorm of my own to get us out of here. Well, we stop that, Super Crook. My flying days aren't over yet. Ha-ha! Nothing can stop me now! There he is, Mork. Drilling to the roof of the gold reserve. And he's got the gold boat! Here comes Mr. Big. He has my super suit, but I've still got my super finger. Well, that about covers it, Min Min. Up, up, and ribbon! Uh-oh, Min. I think I made him mad. An orc car can stand any shock, Min. It's the aftershock that doesn't end. Well, at least you made a soft landing. And now to finish you off. Those bananas ought to give him the slip. <laughs> now all we need is my super suitor. It's off to the big house for Mr. Big. <laughs> Fireman Mork to the rescue. Help! Help! Get me down! Super going, Mork. You proved you're a superhero just by being yourself. Gosh, that's Superman. Maneuvers, Sergeant Thorndike. My promotion depends on it, and so does yours. Against Steinbuckle's bunch of losers, Colonel Jackson, sir, it's in the bag. In the box would be more like it. A robot soldier? <laughs> Great idea, sir. With him on our side. We'll be unbeatable! Not him, Sergeant. Her. And she's been assigned to Turnbuckle's team. But I don't get it, sir. Tell him, Mabel. I am programmed to sabotage the other team. Get it now? She'll destroy them. They'll never know what hit them. <laughs> Yo, special delivery for Squealy. Christmas come a little early this year, Squeal? Even better than that. Better than Christmas? Wow! With this new U.S. of Army equipment, Sergeant Turnbuckle and I won't have to rely on you non-military types to win today's competition. You won't? But what about the old team spirit? What about the satisfaction of a job well done? What about the 3A pass for the winners? At ease, soldierette. You're just being assisted, not replaced. Not yet, anyway. I am 
Jim, Mabel. Yikes! Eek, Laverne, we've been invaded by mechanical men from Mars. Relax, Shul. There's only one of them. How much of an invasion can it be? Forget I asked that question. Stand by to become obsolete, you substandard soldierettes. Meet Mabel, the world's first six million dollar soldier. Mabel stands for Mobile Army Battle and Logistical Element, in case you wanted to know. He defines his impressed. Dual overhead cams, independent suspension, twin eye beam construction. Mabel, you are some piece of work. Yeah, well, let's see how she obeys orders. Put us down! Uh, you've got to admit, Laverne, she does what she's told. Enough of this idle chatter, soldierettes. Let's see you double time back to the barracks for the general's inspection. Yup, 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 yup! Now, Laverne, I'm sure there's a lot more to Mabel than meets the eye. Yeah, well, there's gonna be a lot less of her once I borrow a screwdriver from Fonzie. Private Mabel reporting for duty, ma'am. You're gonna be reporting to the scrap heap once I get into a clean uniform. Clean uniforms coming up. <laughs> Laverne, clean uniforms. Hey, how'd she do that? Let's not look a gift robot in the diode, Laverne. Especially with Squealy arriving for the general's inspection any minute now. Well, you ought to feel right at home. The place looks like a pigsty. Mabel will fix it on the double. Laverne, she's a regular metal tornado. Maybe old Borklips did us a favor after all. I never expected maid service in the army. Assignment complete. Mabel, you're wonderful. I don't know about this, Cheryl. It's too good to be true. Now, Laverne, suspicion is a negative thing. Pan hut! And speaking of negative things, are we ready for inspection, girls? Or will this be yet another waste of a perfectly good white glove? We're, We're ready, ready, sir. sir. Well, if this is a sample of your work, we're a cinch for first place when the general arrives. Pretty good, huh, Squealy? It looks like you two eight balls are finally starting to shape up. I'm going to recommend to Sergeant Tainbuck <laughs> that you two be keel holds. Us? But Mabel... <laughs> Never mind, Laverne. It's nothing we can't tidy up in no time. All right. Inspect something else. A anything else, please. Well, all right. Let's see if I can bounce a corner off your bunk. Mm, not bad to Fazio. Maybe I was a little hasty. And maybe I wasn't getting me out of here. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Well, that's more like it. Yeah. What is this? Assault with a deadly bunk? Why, if it wasn't for Mabel? If it wasn't for Mabel, none of this would have happened. That's right. She... Hold it. Just hold it. Are you two regimental rejects trying to blame this perfect U.S. of A specimen for your own goof-ups? Whoa! Admit it, Turnbuckle. Your team doesn't stand a chance against mine in the general's inspection. Are you kidding, Thorndike? My girls will take your team hands down. Walls down will be more like it. Laverne, our barracks, nothing's left standing. Nothing except her. Private Mabel, ready for inspection, sir. She's out to sabotage us, Laverne. What about our three-day pass? She's out to sabotage it, too. Destruction of a military building, reckless endangerment of a superior pig. Oh, boy! I'm gonna need a calculator for this one. Squealy! What's the meaning of this? I'm warning you, Squealy. If you cost me the competition, it'll cost you your stripes. My stripes? 
You heard Sergeant Kindbuckle. What have you got to say for your sorry selves? I want this place ship shape, and I want it now. Hey, come on, face it, Squirly. There's nothing left here to get into shape. I'd forget about the neatness competition if I were you. Demolition Derby looks more like your style. Did you say Remolition Derby? <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice work, you mechanical marvel, you. Yeah, my time and my marvel. <laughs> Anything for you, Fonzie. Woo, woo, oh, the burn. Woo. That heavy metal monster even has Fonzie fooled. What are we gonna do? Well, for starters, you're gonna make up for this fiasco by getting a perfect score on the obstacle course. Obstacle course is right, Laverne. An obstacle to a clean uniform, an obstacle to my nails, an obstacle to our friendship. If you don't get a move on, sure. And keep an eye out for Mabel. I'm starting to lose my grip. Lose your grip is right. Cheryl, but this is ridiculous. Come on, Laverne. You're swinging for two now. Whoa! Hey! Get on to the next obstacle like your three-day pass depends on it. Because it does. <laughs> Let's see how they do on the swing for life. The swing for life? A very short swing. Ha, ha, ha. There's only one thing to do in a case like this. You mean dessert? Certainly not, Laverne. Our team is counting on us. Follow me! Cheryl, don't look up! I mean, don't look down, Laverne! No, I mean, don't look up! Whoa! Laverne, this is a lot to go through even for a three-day pass. I think somebody was trying to make it a permanent pass, Cheryl. Who? Me? Maybe it's time we gave Metal Maid here a taste of her own medicine. Oh, Laverne, why don't you take this rope? It's so you. Gee, I don't know, Cheryl. I think it's more her. Give me that. More you. Much more you. No her. No you. No you. No you. No you. This does not compute. All right, soldiers. On your marks. Get set. Come on, Cheryl. Last chance. Mm, go. You heard the General Laverne? All I know for sure, Laverne, is Mabel's got the wrong rope. I have been tricked. Nice work, Cheryl. It looks like Mabel's not going to sabotage us anymore. I am not programmed to deal with wars. Uh-oh. It's Fonzie. If anybody can get her back into action, it's him. Hey, the Fonz always helps a lady in distress, even a mechanical one. Laura, hooray! You got it, Pooch. Hey, bullseye cool. Oh. Hey, thanks for the business, girl. See you around the motor pool. All right, you goof ups. That six million dollars worth of rusted robot coming out of your pay. Relax, Squealy. Fonzie will have that talking gas pump good as new in no time. Probably better than new. That's the good news, Trooperettes. The bad news is that once she's fixed, the general wants her assigned to Thorndike's team. What do you mean, bad news? That's the best news we've heard all day. The general wants to see how she works with somebody else, thanks to your bungling. Now we've lost the contest for sure. The pig's got a point, Laverne. Mabel was bad enough when she was on our team. Heaven knows what she'll be like against us. 
Cheryl, how do we end up scouting for the blue team's flag? Just lucky, I guess. Remember, Laverne, if we get their flag before Sergeant Thorndike's team gets ours, we win the competition. Fair chance. Kiss that pass goodbye. Something's wrong with this compass, Laverne. And that's not all that's wrong. <laughs> it looks like we found the new improved Mabel. Well, she's found us. Oh, Laverne, I hope they haven't programmed her to hold a grudge. You are red team. I am blue team. Right, Mabel. But that doesn't mean we still can't be friends. Does it? I am not programmed to have friends. Boy, whatever Fonzie did to her didn't improve her sense of humor. Maybe it's not too late to call for reinforcements. Maybe it is too late, Cheryl. Hey, it's never too late for Fonzie. Hey, wait, cool it there, Mabel. Fonzie, thank goodness. Fonzie's very disappointed in you. Mr. Cole is disappointed. <laughs> all that rust for moving, all that TLC, and this is how you repay me? By scaring my friends here, that's how. Well, the Fonzie's not amused. I don't think I'm particularly amused either. Fasten your seatbelts, girls. We're gonna make crap. Mabel will get you yet. Okay, girls, this is your stuff. Well, thanks for the ride and the rescue. We'll have to do it again real soon. Ah, sure thing. And by the way, if you look over that hill, you just might find the Blue Team HQ. Fonzie, you're amazing. Hey, what can I say? Except look out for Mabel. The Fonz doesn't live by rescues alone, you know. Birds singing, sun shining, leaves leaping. Isn't this a peaceful spot, Laverne? Not for long. Once we report to the pig that we found the blue team's flag, the giant will be jumping. How can we do that, Laverne? Mabel pulled the talk thingy off my radio. Lucky I always carry a spare. Laverne to pig quarters. Come in, pig quarters. That's headquarters, Laverne, and don't you ever forget it. I call him like I see him squeal. I suppose there's a reason for this call? You bet your stripes there is. We found the blue team's headquarters. As much as it pains me to say this, nice work, Tuperettes. Where is it? Where is it? Right under a couple of trees beside a hill. <coughs> he means on the map, Shul. Oh. It's on here somewhere, Laverne. Uh, can we get back to you on that, Squealy? Now that Mabel's been transferred to our team, we need to find another way to sabotage Turnbuckle and his troops. Are you sure we need to do that to win, sir? I'm not taking any chances, Sergeant. Have this delivered to Red Team Headquarters at once. What is it, Colonel? The Neuron Neutralizer. A super secret laughing gas that'll keep the Red Team in stitches until we grab their flag. My pleasure, Colonel. I'll have it delivered immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laverne. We've got the map coordinates. Now, I want you two to stay right where you are until Sergeant Turnbuckle and I capture that enemy fleeing. Whoa! Well, so much for staying right where we are. Then I guess we better go to the road and wait for Squealy. And a three-day pass. Oh, look, Laverne, here comes the red team now. It's us! Hey! That is not a good example of driving courtesy, Laverne. Look, Laverne, a soccer ball. I guess that guy was on his way to entertain the troops. And it's even got a handle. Come on, Shul. Not even the army would come up with something that dumb. I guess you're right. Maybe it's an electronic basketball. And this is the on-off switch. Now that makes sense. What's that ticking, Laverne? Maybe so you can dribble in time to the beat? Come 
on, Cheryl. Let's just dribble up the road until Squealy and Turnbuckle show up. You know, this is kind of fun. They got us surrounded, Cheryl! Anybody for a little basketball? Well, well they've got the neutralizer! Oh, no, run! Run! Ah! What's the matter with them? I guess they don't like basketball. Try not to take it personally, Laverne. I'm sure it wasn't anything you said. Besides, now there's no one left between us and the blue team's flag. That three-day pass is practically in our pockets right now. You're right, Laverne. I wonder why we even bothered to call Squealy and Sergeant Turnbuckle. I think I know, Cheryl. Look! They've got our team flag. So, you must be the two hot shots who sidelined Mabel. Uh-oh, Laverne. This looks like a real good time for the Marines to land or something. And now we're gonna sideline you. Couldn't we, um, talk this over, you know, negotiate or something? We'll even throw in our electronic basketball. The neuron neutralizer. How did you get that? I was wrong about you, Skrulls. You really know how to play hardball. Why, thank you, Sergeant. What a nice thing to say. You really think so? Here, catch. 29 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Don't give it to me. What's with this neutralizer thingy? Everybody's afraid of it but us. You must not know that thing's powerful enough to incapacitate half the state. And the countdowns are almost finished. That doesn't sound like good news, Cheryl. All right, you reject recruits. Hand that over at once. He asked for it, Cheryl, and he deserves it. Catch, Wheelie! I mean the flag, not the <gasps> neuron neutralizer! And in another 15 seconds, it's gonna blow! Quick, somebody! How do you turn this thing off? That's easy. You don't. You m m mean this thing's gonna g g get us all? And if it doesn't, she will! Prepare to be eliminated! It looks like doom, no matter how you slice it, Laverne. When it rains, it pours, Cheryl. Away! There's only one thing that can save us now, and he's it! Cool it, Mabel. Remember, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. That does not compute. Look, we got a runaway time bomb here that even the Fonz doesn't have time to fix, and you are charging around here like a raging bull. Now, does that compute? Mabel knows what to do. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> wow! No wonder nobody wanted to play catch with us. She had a tin grin, Laverne, but a heart of pure gold. Sorry, girls, but this is the best even the Fonz can do on short notice. Our friend Mabel is now a mobile army dishwashing unit first class. first <laughs> Let's take her for a quick test spin. Wow, Fonz, that's impressive. So impressive that I'm giving all four of you three-day pierces. Thanks, Squealy. You're all a uh, pig. Yeah! About those three-day pierces, Defazio. Yes, Squealy. You can forget them. You'll be so busy pulling guard duty, doing KP, polishing tanks. But, but it was Mabel. A dishwasher. Ha! 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 Christmas from Payless. Merry Christmas.
beautiful hair begins with St. Ives, jojoba shampoo conditioner combo, henna combo, or the new aloe vera combo. Your choice, two sixty nine dollars each. Or aloe vera skin care products are a drink of moisture for thirsty skin. Cream or lotion, $1.59 each. Then St. Ives vitamin E combo to protect even the driest skin. Lotion and cream, just three thirty nine dollars for both. Look who's back, Warehouse Toys, with a new location in Bellevue loaded with low-priced brand-name toys. Fisher Price and Child Guidance, Play School, Sesame Street, building toys like Legos, models, poster art kits, and building blocks. Fantastic savings on electronic games, Tonka toys, dolls from Kenner, Mattel, and more. Shop early for best selection. Warehouse Toys now in Bellevue, on the corner of 108th Northeast and Northeast 6th, across from Casa Lupita and in Tacoma on 100th Street Southwest. You know why Crunch Berries are special? You bet! Because Captain Crunch only picks sweet, yummy, special berries like us! Packing my Crunch Berry cereal. Mm, very delicious! Yay, Crunch Berry! Crunch Berries are a very sweet part of a balanced breakfast. When you got a big taste for a bubble gum, you can follow the captain and get yourself some. Two whole packs. That'll blow you away. In peanut butter crunch or Crunch Berries, hey! Rainbow bubble gum. Especially marked by... Hey, hope you like in the Mork and Mork, Mork from the Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, Fonzie Hour. Weird concepts, but hey, they worked back in the day. So, all right. So, how many people do you remember Alien Legion? Man, I loved some Alien Legion. Uh, still do. They occasionally pop up with a new storyline from a new comic book company. Uh, it's been through Marvel, it's been through Dark Horse, it's been through Titan. Um, awesome book. I love this thing. Uh, I really think it, Carl Potts is the creator. Somebody needs to get Carl Potts on this. This needs to be a TV series. That's all I'm saying. We need an Alien Legion TV series. So, alright. So, we're going in a completely different direction. And we're going back to Thunderbirds 2086. Um, you know, I fan of this stuff, man. This is one of the ones I forgot it, like I said, forgot it existed. Comes back. I get into it. I dig this, dig this anime. Um, so I, I don't know what else to tell you on this one, but Thunderbirds 2086, episode eight. Fault lines. Enjoy. Mankind is ever expanding the frontiers of technical superiority into areas unknown and uncharted. Each quest promises marvelous discoveries, but each also brings potential danger. In direct response to the dangers of our advanced technology, we need an organization that is ready to mobilize dramatic survival resources at a moment's notice. Conceptions and rescue that can challenge the impossible. <laughs> Thunderbirds 2086. The Thunderbirds, five of the finest cadets in the world, dedicated to the service of mankind wherever he may be in distress. Combined with a dazzling array of vehicles and equipment designed to specifications in the space-age technology of the 21st century. A special rescue squad ready to answer a last chance distress call. A call that could arrive at any time from any disaster scene on or off this planet. These are the Thunderbirds 2086.
can't tell you how excited my viewers will be by this tour of the power plant. The world's first commercial underwater thermoelectric power plant, built right on the Maui Fault, and yours truly, George Rumpel, is here with on-the-spot coverage. Uh, how does it work? We pump water into the earth, where it's heated by lava and turns to steam. The steam drives turbines, which generate pollution-free electricity. A skeleton crew is operating the unit until all systems go online. Say, what's that over there? A highly unstable area. We blocked it off to protect people from underwater landslides. No risk is too great for my viewers. Why get me out of here? We experience minor shocks every so often. It's just the fault line letting off pressure, but don't worry, we're not in any danger. Just get me back to the surface, mister. I've got a show to do. Good evening, welcome to Eye on the Universe. This is George Rumpel. I'm here to talk with the Chief Officer of Undersea Electric, Ms. Susan Frontosa, who has an incredible hey, story look, all it's her Susan. own. Susan! Huh? What did you say, Skipper? Will you hurry up and look? It's Susan. She's on the Tri-D. Miss Frontosa, I know that you have a degree in electrical engineering, but I'm sure our viewers would like to know how you took control over so large a company at the tender age of 25. My father left me all the stock. That's definitely Susan. Miss Frontosa, our viewers are interested in learning about your brother. What's behind his sudden departure from Undersea Electric? If you don't mind, I'd like to talk about the benefits of my new energy station. All right, let's talk about the power plant. I don't understand it. Why should Edward run out now, right before the opening of the station? Their father's death was a great shock. Edward was senior research geologist, involved from the very beginning of the construction. His disappearance must be putting a lot of pressure on poor Susan. Well, now she's running the whole show herself. Right. I sure do miss Susan a lot. Dylan, do you remember the last time we went to Susan's house? She always had a crush on you, Skip. Oh, yeah? Well, let's go then. Come on, Dylan, will you take me there again? Might not be a bad idea. You've got to check out the new flight recorder aboard TB1 anyway. Well, I'll give Susan my regards. I'll go and check in. Tell the commander that his nephew Skipper will be accompanying TB1 flight to Hawaii. Yippee! <laughs> saw the show. The board felt it was good publicity, and I agreed with them. I just wish Edward were here to share the final chapter of Dad's dream. What really happened, Susan? Why did your brother leave? Dylan, we... we had a terrible fight one day. Edward said he discovered that the plant is in danger from magma eruptions caused by underwater volcanoes. When the board refused to believe him, he stole a lot of top-secret documents and maps and ran out. Since then, I haven't seen him. He's sure the contractors tricked Dad into building the plant on that site. Your brother's always had a strong sense of right and wrong. Edward won't be able to rest until he knows for certain that the plant your father built is a safe one. Edward, what are you really looking for? Perhaps the captain could help. Dylan, we haven't been close in years, but you're still a good friend. I've got to discover the truth. Until I hear from Edward, I have to assume the plant is in danger. Dylan, I need your help. You've known us since high school. You know how Edward gets so caught up in things. Besides, it looks as if you could do with a few good home-cooked meals. I don't have much time. The fault has been unusually active. I'll have to make my move today. I have to prove that cryolite is really here. Little fella, I got you. 
Looks as if you scraped against Carl. You're a mighty lucky young lad. You've got to be careful of the currents out there. Huh? What's this? Where did you get it? My friend Susan gave it to me. picking up an unidentified signal near the prohibited zone. Could be a whale. Cryolite, a fuel element so powerful that even a minute amount could propel a spacecraft to Jupiter. And I've got to prove that that cryolite is down there somewhere in the magma vault. Intruder entering prohibited zone. This is submarine four. Clear the lock in pursuit of intruder. Welcome, my friends. Intruder submarine. You are in a restricted zone. Turn back at once. This is Edward Frantosa. Follow me, Captain. Edward, it's too dangerous down there. Better call the boss. After all this time, why should Edward make his move now? How did the seismoscope readings look, Henry? Not good, ma'am. There's a rise on all seismic activities. We've got to get him out of there. I'm going to call in. This is Captain Beta calling International Rescue. Captain James, stand by to launch Thunderbird 4. Yes, sir. Dylan, you'll stand by aboard TB-1 and monitor Captain James. That fault line is extremely unstable. Yes, Commander. Thank you, Dylan. Thunderbird 4 is launching now. Control, TB-4 is heading 035 at 57 knots. Here's the spot. I knew it, I knew it. Enough cryolite for the fuel cells of a thousand starships. I knew I was right all along. But the entire installation's in terrible danger. Callan, this is Thunderbird 1. Seismic sensors indicate tremendous pressure inside the fault. Roger, Captain. I'm taking Thunderbird down. Be careful, Callan. I've got to get the proof I need. show a drastic drop in pressure. Look at that seismic reading. Ms. Prontosa, sensors indicate a strong possibility of volcanic eruption in the restricted zones 3 through 28. Fasten your seatbelt, Susan. I'm taking her down for a landing. The 
eruption has subsided momentarily. I've got to go back for the cryolite. Come in, Edward. This is Callan James aboard Thunderbird 4. Try the comm harpoon. Closing in now. It's very tight. The currents are sweeping through here like a hurricane, holding at a hundred yards. Put us through as soon as you're able to make the connection with Edward. This is Dylan. I'm aboard Thunderbird 1. Susan is right here alongside me. You're in great danger down there. You'll find nothing worth risking your life for. No answer. Come on, Edward, talk to me. Okay, Callan, prepare to launch tractor cables. You'll have to go get him. Both tractor cables away. Watch engaged. Preparing to retract. Oh, no, no, not now. I've got him, Dylan. Preparing to surface. Edward, don't! Dylan, he's cutting the lines with a laser. I can't hold him. Callan, are you all right? I'm all right, holding steady at 200 yards. Edward, listen to me. Please don't keep running away. Susan, I've got to do this. It's for our father. There's going to be more volcanic activity. You were right. The plant site is in terrible danger. Susan, the reason the contractors built this site here was to illegally mine a deposit of cryolite. Cryolite? Impossible. It's true. I had to find out on my own. I just couldn't put you in danger. Picking up more activity. Satellite 9 is sending data now. Sir, we'll have to protect the cryolite if it really is out there. Cryolite mining is regulated by the Federation. A fuel element like cryolite could automatically guarantee any world a high level of technical superiority. Warn all ships in the area. Volcanic eruption is imminent. The undersea electric plant is sitting on a time bomb. Temperatures rising rapidly inside the fault. Tremors are growing much stronger. This is Staff Chief Peters to Thunderbird 1. Our computers forecast a major eruption about to take place. Randy, evacuate all remaining personnel. Edward, come in, please. You've got to let Thunderbird 4 get you out. Edward! You must leave the area. Edward, are you all right? I thought we had more time, at least two months. Listen, the evidence that I have must be brought in. It's important. Do you understand me, Susan? Dad discovered too late the plant was on a dangerous site. He wasn't to blame. Callan, can't you find some way to get him out of there? His ship is wedged in the rocks. I can't get in. My hull is ripped open, and I'm losing pressure rapidly. There's no way I can surface. You must leave me. <gasps> Shock's averaging 5.7 and getting stronger. Thunderbirds 1 and 4, I want you to watch your scopes. When the shock waves pass 6.5, you're to pull out of that area immediately. This is a direct order. Edward, please, I need you. Susan, you have the plans to build another electric plant. You don't need me to help with that. You can build it. You can't let the dream we had be buried with me down here. You can do it. <laughs> Edward, those are your dreams. Remember what we said. 
A future for the children with clean air, clean water, clean energy with no pollution. Dylan, there must be something you can do. Callan, prepare Thunderbird 13 for remote launch. You know that 13 doesn't have a universal airlock coupling tunnel? Neither does Edward ship. I have to use diving gear down there. Huh? But the gear doesn't have the rating for that kind of depth. There's no time to get TB-14. I'll have to risk it. Shock's climbing to 5.9. All ships are clear of the area. Depth is 475 meters. I'm closing on Edward's ship. Come in as close as you can. I'm going to try to hook up another pair of tractor cables. Hurry, Dylan. Okay, one is done. Very sluggish. Just one more. Ah! Dylan, what's happening down there? Are you all right, Dylan? I'm okay. I'm going for the last hookup. The scopes are off the scale. There's magma erupting all over the area. We're already past the commander's safety margin, Dylan. Callan, the hookup is complete. Go! Rock slide! It's thrown my inertial guidance. Going to full reverse thrust. I'm afraid the lines won't hold. Edward's ship will be ripped to pieces. I'm aboard TB-13. I'll try to jar him loose. Satellite scans indicate the undersea electric complex is sinking. Can you confirm? This is Thunderbird 1. I can confirm. The entire complex is lost. But there are no injuries. Callan has Edward Frontoza safely aboard TB4. We're on our way home, everyone. When the area cools off in a few months, the Federation can begin prospecting for the cryolite under proper guidelines. You've got enough proof to bring charges against the contractors. We can clear Dad's name. The future Dad saw for us has a better chance than ever.
We'll begin again. We'll build a new plan and together help the world's children with a clean and pure energy source. Oh, Edward, I'm so proud. As soon as I'm out of here, we're all gonna celebrate. And we'll plan for a brand new undersea complex. This time, it'll be built to last. La, 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 la. Oh, Louie here. Listen to me. You gotta play it safe around electricity. Watch out, little buddy, when you plug these in. Don't plug in too many, my friend. Ho, 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 can't hold anymore. Now here's an empty socket. It's such a scary sight. Nothing goes in here but another pretty light. Yeah. Watch out, little buddy. Listen to me. You gotta play it safe around electricity. Play it safe around the tree. Watch out. Be careful what you do. Where are you going with those stripes? That's Aqua Fresh for kids. Just follow me. Toothpaste? I hate to brush. <laughs> Aqua Fresh for kids makes brushing fun. It's got a zingy taste kids love. Fluoride, too, and it's easy to pump and has a neat top. Great, but how are you going to get those stripes in there? <laughs> Watch. Aqua Fresh for kids. I make brushing fun. My McDonald's Happy Meal, please. Thank you. My McDonald's Happy Meal, please. Rabble, rabble. Hamburglar, you've really become attached to that McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> Here come the Fraggles in their vegetable cars. And you can get either Gobo Fraggle or Red or Boober and Wembley or Moki when you buy a McDonald's Happy Meal featuring Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock toys at McDonald's. Hopefully, hopefully these guys will start showing up in MCU. I really want to see Canadian superheroes for some reason. Uh, I am a sucker for Alpha Flight. Man, I don't know. But here you guys get lit up. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons for the Intellivision. You know that was an overly complex game. Uh, so, we're going to keep going. Uh, we're going to keep on the sci-fi line. Um, I guess I guess the last half of this kind of has a theme, maybe. So we're going to Laser Tag Academy, uh, episode nine. Um, and I rewatched this one. Yet more weird stuff that they get those guns to do. So I'm not going to give too much away. Uh, this is Sir Tom Jaron. Is the episode so enjoy. A thousand years from now, a perfect world. Laser tag champion Jamie Jaron is the sole possessor of starlight power. Until the resurrection of a master criminal from the past, Draxon Dreer. through time in his quest to conquer the future. He is pursued by Jamie Jaron. Jamie must team with her ancestors, Tom, Beth, and Nikki Jaron. Join us now in their adventure through time to preserve the past, save the future, and keep the peace established by 
the Laser Tag Academy. Come on, Nikki. What's taking you so long? Jamie and the Jaren family patiently wait for the evil Dreer to make his next move. Don't slam that <laughs> door. I won't, Mom! And don't run in the house. I gotta get Excalibur to Tom. Hey, am I bad or what? I mean, look at this cardboard armor. Here it is, Excalibur. Can I play with it? After the ball. It's part of my costume. Is the paint dry? He was in the garage. I'm gonna make the best Arthur the Camelot Ball has ever seen. How come you're so sure Susie Resnick is gonna pick you to be Arthur? Being a kid, you wouldn't understand. But she's bonkers about me. Bonkers? So, what do you think? Doesn't she look great? You look almost as great as I do. We don't have costume balls at the Academy. <laughs> That's because you're too busy thinking up rules all the time. I'm really looking forward to this. Did Susie call yet? She will. She's bonkers about him. Hi, Charles. Come over to spy on us again? No, just to give Tom some bad news. Susie Resnick picked Billy Gordon to be Arthur at the Camelot Ball. What? Billy Gordon? She wouldn't pick him. He's a dork. If you're lying, I'm gonna pop you one. Am not. My mother's good friends with Susie Resnick's mother, and she told her. Susie asked Billy Gordon. So how do you like those apples? <laughs> oh. Hey, Tom, does this mean Susie Resnick is more bonkers about Billy Gordon? Gee, Tom, I'm really sorry. Hey, don't worry about it. It's nothing. Can I play with Excalibur now? Ah, uh, Billy Gordon, king of the ball. What does he know about Camelot? Uh, Susie Resnick. Huh. The real Guinevere would have picked me. Now, she was a classy lady. No, Ralphie, get away! Hmm. Why don't I just go back to Camelot and meet the real Guinevere? Yeah. And why not? Tom! I've never seen Tom so upset. Is he out here? No. Jamie, I know my brother. When he's got the blues, he's gone. Well, where would he go? With a starlight anywhere. Tom wouldn't use a starlight like that. He knows Alonga wouldn't like it. And you know how he feels about important Academy rules. You really think... Jamie, Dreer stole the time chart computer. <sighs> That's all we need. More good news. We're putting together another time chart, but it will take a while. In the meantime... Dreer's running loose through time with no way to find him. Or Tom. Sixth century, Camelot. So this is where Guinevere really lived. What the? <laughs> You'll never catch me now, you blackguards! You will not get away with stealing my horse, Knave. Mars, attack! If I get my hands on your feathered hide, I'll have you for stew! I don't like those odds. I'm gonna even them out a little. Come here, you winged devil! This time I... Which one of your black hearts wants to meet St. Peter first? This sword is Excalibur. Yield or I'll run you through. Sire! Behind you! What sorcery is this? All right, boys, slap leather. <laughs> Mars, the magician's wand. <laughs> Don't get too saddle sore. Duck! My starlight! Did you see where my starlight hit? We've got to get it back. Starlight? Uh, 
begging your lordship's pardon, why don't you just use your sorcery and fly it out of the lake as you flew this rock? I'm gonna give you the short version. The sorcery is in the starlight, the thing in my hand, which is now in the lake. Get it? Ah, uh -huh. How will you swim, lad? All right, plug it in. Hurry up! I can't quite lock it in. Sixth century Camelot. And Tom Jaron is there by himself. Interesting. Find the other brats. What happened? You idiot! You destroyed the time chart! I am personally going to turn you into a pair of fur-lined gloves! But first, we're going to take care of Tom Jaron. You're really a knight of the round table? So fall off the brave, that's what King Arthur himself calls me. Uh, row a little to the left, lad. And you can really introduce me to Guinevere? You don't know what that means to me. I've come a long way just to meet her. As I was saying, she'll be delighted to meet a lad with your sorcering ability. I'm sure she'll find your magic most useful, as will I. I think this is where the Falcon dropped my starlight. Ah, the sorcery stick. You got it. And if I don't get it back, we're in big trouble. Take a big breath, lad. The lake's quite deep. <gasps> Look hard, lad. I've got big plans for you and that sorcery stick. Yes, I see him. Bye-bye, Jaron. I knew I should have paid more attention in diving class. Do you find it? No. Drear. Trouble. Rock the boat! You want us to drown? And what do you think that's going to do? Look everywhere! I must be certain Tom Jaron is finished! For good. Uh, uh, Lord, I'm afraid we're doomed. No way! We got a perfect submarine here. What is a submarine? Our ticket out of here, Falstaff, old boy. All we have to do is pedal. Get him! Lounge, water apes. Scuds! We're trapped, my lord. Not unless we trap them first. Ready? Heave! Let's beat it! I don't get it, Falstaff. Why don't we just walk in the front door? Can't, my lord. I lost my key. Key? Hey, yo, Falstaff. I thought you were a knight of the round table. Um, uh, most of the time. I think I hear the queen. Guinevere. Come on, I'll boost you up. How will I know her? Look for a lady with a crown. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Oh, who are you? Um, uh, Sir Tom and Jaren, my lady. I've come about the Camelot Ball. You are early. The ball is tomorrow night. No, I, I mean the one at my school. I was supposed to be Arthur, you know, the king. I know him. Yeah, well, uh, Susie Resnick picked another guy. I'm not Arthur. Somebody else is. You're very strange. Yeah, that's what my sister says. Here, these are for you. You're also very nice. Gosh, Your Majesty. You're everything I always dreamed you'd be. You're just like you are in all the King Arthur books. 
Queen Guinevere. That's the same bird that jumped me at the lake. It is. And you guys were with him. Take him to the dungeon. Uh, uh, you guys are making a big mistake. I'm a friend of Sir Falstaff the Brave. He's real tight with King Arthur. I am King Arthur. You're King Arthur? Well, I shall have to find that sorcery stick on my own. Yuck! What a mess! Every King Arthur book ever written has got to be under here. Along with about a jillion dirty socks. Pew! Tom is really into King Arthur. He's certainly not into clean socks. We're going to Camelot. Ow! way to fish. He might know the way to Camelot. Come on. Uh, pardon, sir. Miss Sorcery Stick, you found it. It belonged to a friend of mine. Hey! Ah, uh, must be waterlogged from the lake. <laughs> the lake? Isn't that where you found it? Time to go fishing. Ah, uh, you've got a Sorcery Stick, too. Ah, <coughs> uh, uh, Merlin. You're magicians, just like young Tom. You've seen Tom? Well, I, uh... Where's my brother? That is King Arthur's castle. The dungeon is deep inside. How do we sneak past those guards? Sneak? Count me out. I am a knight of the round table. We do not sneak. We do not lie. Falstaff, you want me to show you what the sorcery stick can really do? Mm. Of course, I'm not above stretching the truth for my very dear friend, Thomas. <laughs> Where is he? Arthur's dungeon. Let's go! You will never reach the boy. Arthur will stop you with Excalibur. What is Excalibur? Arthur's invincible broadsword. It is more powerful than even your magic, Drear. There is nothing that can defeat it. Then Excalibur will be mine! Are you sure these outfits will fool him? Trust me, lass. Who goes there? I am the Duke of Falstaff. These are my duchesses. The king is expecting us. You're some fast talker, Falstaff. The best. That's his cell, Your Majesty. Thank you. Queen Guinevere. Young Tom of Jaron, I have brought you something to eat. I wish it was my starlight. To Arthur, to Camelot, and the Knights of the Table Round. Here, here. And to Excalibur. <laughs> What a fool! Thank you, your majesty. Who are you? Not a friend, I'm afraid. Seize him! Retrieve Excalibur! Yeah! Even Merlin's magic can't match that. Dungeon. Oh, I could be a great knight if Arthur would just give me a shot. Are you a champion? Am I a champion? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Try first place two years running in the hundred yard dash, plus all star first base in Little League. Sir Tom, you truly have a strange way of speaking. You don't. You seem such a gentle soul. Why did you attack Arthur and his knights? Uh, yeah, that. Well, uh, that was a big mistake I met, named Falstaff. You eat after I finished Tom Jaren. Dreer! A friend of yours? Not hardly. You know the starlight won't hurt people. That's why I have this. Excalibur! What does that mean? 
It means you're done for. No! No! I'll make this as painful as possible. Doing here? Saving your hide. Grab the queen. After them. <gasps> it's sorcery, sire. We must rescue Guinevere. Don't worry, we'll get her back. I've read all your books. Who are you? Your greatest fan. What? They're very powerful magicians. Keep coming. Your champions are coming to rescue you, they think. Wait for the command. Use your sorcery sticks to let Arthur in. They'll be safer on the other side. Safer? Lash, that's Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, not the Sisters of Charity. Hey, yo, Falstaff, we're running this part of the show. <laughs> Falstaff and I'll take the stairs. Tom! I'll be careful. <laughs> That's a brave lad, but we better even the odds a bit. You're a joke. I'm not even gonna break a sweat putting you away. Hey, let her go. It's me you want. I want both of you. I'm just going to finish you first. Guinevere! Tom! Help me! Hold tight, Gwen. I'll... I'm going to chop you into bite-sized pieces. Careful you don't choke on the next mouthful. You've got to do better than that, Jaren. I'm coming, lad! You 
are no match for me, you water apes! Just sit on your duffs for a bit while I help the lad! For your acts of bravery, defending the crown and my queen, I hereby forgive your brigand past, even stealing my horse. You are truly the soul of kindness, sire. And dub thee a knight of the round table. Rise, sir. What are we going to call you? Falstaff the Brave. Sir Falstaff the Brave. Way to go, Falstaff. And you, Tom. What can I give you for saving my queen? Sire, may I be so bold as to suggest that Tom accompany me to the Camelot Ball? You'd go with me? Drumstick, sire? I wish this was you. Don't they look great together? <laughs> That's my brother. said they hated it but i'm sorry um we only got a few more episodes this is episode nine so we got 10 11 12 13 that's it we'll be done with laser tag academy um like i said you've seen what those just anytime they they're, they're, those are like the the big old mary sues man we're like oh we need the gun to uh we can use the gun to uh, we can do whatever we want with it which is weird because the only thing a laser tag gun does is fires at another laser tag starlight sensor and makes it beep, 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 beep. That's it. I don't know how they came up with all the concepts on this show, but they did. So, all right. We're going, I guess kind of keeping it sci-fi spacey. We're going back to Starcom. 
Starcom. Uh, like I said, young astronauts. Man, I'll tell you what. If NASA was more like Starcom, man, I'd be an astronaut right now, man. Because we'd be flying around on Mars and stuff in a transformable spaceship. Hell yeah. Um, although, I'm not going to lie. I have the uh, ongoing, I guess, joke. I was like, man. If you knew. if Okay, quick question. If you knew you were going to die. Say you had a year left. And you had a chance that they could send you to Mars. And start putting stuff together. You know full well you would die on Mars. But you're also going to die on Earth. Would you go to Mars? Would you be the. Would you be one of the first Martians? Just saying. I would be. So here you guys go. This is Starcom episode 4. And this is Caverns of Mars. Enjoy. This is just incredibly exciting. I mean, they've actually found a lost city of the builders. Let's not get carried away, Slim. What they found was one wall. So far. But who knows what might be buried deeper under the sand. Our instrument readings indicate that you might be right, Colonel Griffin. I knew it. We're witnessing galactic history being made. Don't you feel humble? Actually, I feel hungry. Care to join me in the commissary for some chow, Consuela? I'd love to. I hear their soy pro tastes like genuine cow. Cow leather, you mean. Amazing. We could be on Pluto and Dash would find a woman to fall for. He's just doing his job. After all, we're here as an escort to the United System's top scientists. Besides, wouldn't you rather be here watching this than having lunch with the lovely Dr. O'Shaughnessy? I think there's something wrong with your oxygen mix. Travers to Griffin. Come in, Slim. Roger, Bill. What is it? You guys have got a whole lot of trouble coming your way. There's a big sandstorm coming your way out of the northeast. ETA, less than an hour. Thanks, Bill. Trouble? I'll say. There's a cloud on our horizon, and it doesn't have a silver lining. Get everyone into the Starmax, quickly. Storms can last for months. Every trace of the site could be lost. We've left out the tracers there. When the storm's over, we can find it. It may be buried again, but if we must start over, we will. You're taking this well, Consuela. I know you've searched all your life for this find. It's the Martian way. Life is hard here. One must adapt, if one is to survive. Where to now? Orders are to head for the base at Burrow City. This Star Max is due for routine maintenance. Hey, great. I can visit Tom and Jenny. They'd love to see their Uncle Slim again. It sure is nice of you to take us riding in your laser rat, Bob. Well, you kids should know how to handle vehicles like this, just in case there's ever an emergency. Like to steer for a while, Jenny? You bet! Hey, no fear! When do I get to drive? Be patient and wait your turn, Tommy. Wee, this is fun! Where are we now, Bob? We're getting near the Vals Marineris, Jenny. Uh-oh. Looks like a sandstorm up ahead. Better let me drive, Jenny. We've got to get back to Burroughs City. If we get caught in it, it could foul up our instruments might get lost.
Kids, are you all right? Uh-huh. I think so. What happened? We broke through the sandstone crust. Looks like we'll have to radio for help. Uh-oh. Looks like the radio's broken. That's okay. Our suit radios have enough power. Lieutenant Bob Anders calling Burroughs City. That's funny. It's not working. You mean we're trapped down here? No, no, honey. Of course not. They'll find us by our suit tracer signals. We can't stay here. Not with all that sand coming down. Let's move over there to wait it out. I'm scared. It's spooky down here. Yeah. What if there's monsters? Nothing to be scared of. If there ever was anything alive down here, it's been gone for millions of years. That's strange. I've never seen rock like this before. Ah! I knew it! There are monsters! Tom, Jenny, wait! It's just a sculpture of some kind. You'll get lost! Come back! Well, Slim is going to see his family, and Consuela and I thought we'd check out the sights, such as they are. You're welcome to come with us, Crowbar. Well, I don't want to be a third wheel. Why should that bother you all of a sudden? Bad news? Maybe. Seems Jenny and Tom are out with Bob Anders and a laser rat. They're overdue. I'm worried that they might have been caught in that storm. Maybe we'd better go look for them. Yeah, maybe we'd better. What is it, Bob? Some ancient city of the builders. Has to be. Footsteps! What? Footsteps! I heard Bob's footsteps behind us. You're right. That means there's air down here. Maybe so, but let's keep our helmets on just to be safe. Come on, we've got to find a way out of here. I think we're near the excavation site. It's hard to tell. The sandstorm has changed everything. Any sign of them, Crowbar? I'm getting some very faint readings. Might be suit tracers. Maybe we ought to get some air back up to... Look at that! We were worried that the sandstorm would bury it. Instead, it did our job for us. I don't care about the city now. I just want to find Tom and Jenny. Don't worry, Slim. We will. Hey! What's going on? Hey! Breaking. We must have broken through the crust. No. We're on some kind of platform. We're being taken into the city. Imagination.
way. What do we do now? Hey, you're the scientist. You tell us. Any suit tracer readings? None. But according to this, there's air out there. Oxygen-nitrogen mix. We know that Mars had a much thicker atmosphere millions of years ago. Evidently, some of it was trapped below the surface. I wouldn't recommend breathing it. We don't know where it's been. Anything in the rule book about proper Starcom procedure in Alien City, Slim? We've got to get out of here and find Tom and Jenny. Makes sense to me. That's not necessary. According to our sensor, the kids are in here. What? Okay, let's go search for them. Prepare to power deploy. Hey, what happened? The engine just died. Looks like if we go anywhere, it's going to be on foot. Maybe we can still find them with this. You know, I'm getting... Let me guess, a bad feeling about this? How'd you know? Why this tunnel? Why not? Fair enough. What is it? I'm scared. to get in? I don't think we have a lot of choice. We're running low on air. Maybe there's a team of archaeologists at the other end of this. This is incredible! Builders were obviously non-human. Notice the design of the chair. This looks like some kind of information terminal. Careful, Crowbar, don't touch anything. Hey, come on, Dash. I didn't just fall off the Star Freighter this morning, you know. I'm getting tired of this. While we're wasting time here, Tom and Jenny and Bob could be in bad trouble. Roger. Whoa! Uh-oh. Now look what you made me do. What do we do now? Just to be on the safe side, I suggest we get out of here fast. What? <laughs> Amazing! Evidently, there's still power in these machines even after millions of years. Look, what's that? Maybe it means exit. Let's hope so. Come on. Oh, that's hot. Ah! Huh? Looks like the end of the line. We're still underground, and we don't have much air left. Our radios are still on the fritz. Keep moving, kids. It's all we can do. Man, just when I think I'm beyond being impressed. This must be the central monitoring and control area for the whole city. If only we could communicate with it. A secret it could tell us. Yeah, like the way out. Suppose it heard it? More to the point, did it like what it heard? Bob, I, I can't breathe. We gotta take off our helmets.
Okay, get yours off. I'll help Jenny with hers. I can breathe. Seems to be okay, so far. It's awful stale. Just be glad it's not carbon dioxide. Come on, you two. We're not out of this yet. What's going on? Why didn't I bring my camera? If I can get even a few of them, we might be able to decipher the builder's language. Hey, I'm getting a reading. There's someone that way. Come on, it might be Tom and Jenny. What about all of this? We might get another chance like this, but Bob and the kids will have no chance unless we go. with Bob. Get in the cab. We can wait out the storm and... What happened? We'll figure it out later. Right now, let's get these three back to Borough City. Good idea. I've had enough of this place. monsters down there. They weren't monsters. They saved our lives. That's what I remember, too. When we found you in the Harv 7, you had your helmets on and full air tanks. I can't explain it. That's okay. We can't explain how the Harv 7 got moved from where we left it. Not to mention the laser rat. And there's the little matter of that mysterious sandstorm that has hidden all trace of the city once again. The traces we left there don't seem to work anymore. It'll be a long time before we find it again, if we do. It's as if that big computer, or whatever it was, showed us all the door and then hid the house. Organic senility in the memory banks, maybe. After all, it is millions of years old. I don't know. I think it knew exactly what it was doing. Well, I'm just glad everyone got out okay. Oh! What have you got in your pocket, Jenny? Oh, I almost forgot. This 
Chris was in here when I woke up. A little bit of knowledge. Looks like that's all we're allowed to have. For now, anyway. sold separately from Captain Power and the soldiers. Hey, I hope you're still liking the Starcom. Uh, I know, man. I, I'm really surprised I never had any Starcom toys. Uh, never, not even recently. Uh, I think I might have had one of the little magnetic footed figures or something like that, but nothing, you know, full. No, not a full play set. Not, not the ships, no nothing. Man, I'd love to have some of them ships. Those are sweet. I think it'd look cool up here. By the way, awesome present from the wife. She knows I like at-ats. Boom, 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 at-ats. At-ats. Rhymes with hat, hat. So, and new microphone. Uh, once we start getting more in-studio guests, we'll go back to being able to use two microphones instead of having to put the microphone in the middle and not getting the best sound. Um, and I was for, asked when I did the on, you know, when we did the convention interviews, um, first time I ever did those, uh, in that, in that kind of situation. Um, so now we're going to fix that. We're, we're going to take care of that. So when I do convention interviews, we're going to be different. So I'm going to do this again because I did this last night. So, y'all need not to sleep on this. This is... This is Stranger and Destroyer. Uh, Night at the Grand House Part 2. This is a great album. Um, this is set up like uh, music from movies that never existed. They even put dialogue and everything in it. And... Like that sweet album. Wow. I'm a sucker for vinyl, by the way. Um, if anybody wants to buy me any vinyl, I will not turn down any vinyl that is sent to my house. Um, oh, I say, I say that, but uh, I guess you sent me like Lawrence Welk. I might turn that down. Send me any synth wave or heavy metal boom. movie soundtracks. I would totally be down for that. 
Uh, but here you go. Look at that. It even, make, it even has the uh, artwork and stuff for the movies that never existed. So, and each track is a, is a different movie. So, this, this is an awesome album. I can't stress enough how good this is as I yet again hit my microphone. Um, so, remember, next week, no new episode of Sci Fridays, but we will continue Saturday morning serials uninterrupted unless I am sick and dying again. Um, and uh, remember, Mondays, Group Therapy TV with interviews from all kinds of people. We just had an interview with Mina Walker from the Spanish heavy metal band Crump, Crump, uh, Crump. I don't know what I want to say. I can't get it out. Um, we've had some great interviews on that show. Uh, normally, every Friday at 8 p.m. is Sci Fridays, but like I said, we'll take a hiatus for a couple weeks. We'll be back every Saturday. You're right here, Saturday morning serials. Boom, check it out. And we're back, so you can go find us on Patreon. Help us out, patreon.com backslash group therapy TV. Any donations help. We're upgrading some stuff around here. I'd like to get a new chair. I'm not going to lie. I got the microphone, maybe some clip microphones, maybe. Um, I'd like to get me a new chair. These are not the most comfortable chairs to sit in. So I want to get me a nice new chair. I don't think that's too, 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 bad, too bad to ask for. Uh, we were very close, very, very close to 6,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so very much. Uh, big shout out to everybody watching. Uh, every Saturday morning, your guys are all there. Uh, God. Um, Winner, Nufi, uh, Way Out, um, Robert, Rob, uh, Nancy. Abe, uh, Johnny, you guys are all great. Love you guys to death. Thank you for watching. Uh, and um, we're going to continue this. We're going to drop an episode Christmas Eve morning and New Year's Eve morning. So there will still be. We're not, we're not stopping this. So um, I'm going to try to put an episode here at the end. Uh, so we're going to try for that. Hopefully YouTube doesn't go new. Uh, so, oh, by the way, um, I still have people ask for Centurions. Uh, can't air. Um, I cannot air Bionic 6. Um, sorry. I wish I could. I have Bionic 6. Can't air it. So, um, I want you guys to all have a great weekend. Have an awesome day. Uh, you guys can come check me out if you're in the Dayton area tomorrow, uh, December 11th. You can come visit me at the Jim and Dan Comic Show at the Wright State Student Union Center. Are you game? will be there selling all kinds of stuff. I uh, got a big allotment of uh, Star Wars and G.I. Joe's recently. So we'll have a lot of toys. Plus, I restocked the, the comics and everything. So you can come check us out. So I'm going to say good night, good day to everybody. Because it's not nighttime yet. Because it's mid afternoon. Unless you're watching this at night. Because uh, I know some of you guys watch them sporadically, and I appreciate it too. I love you guys for watching me when we drop. Uh, we are on the Monster Channel too, so you can check us out there. And uh, take care, and I will see you all there. Bye.